A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the, the most beneficent, most merciful. All praise is to Allah and Allah alone, for He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Assalamu alaikum and good evening everyone. Thank you for joining me this evening on Roots. My name is Thana and tonight we'll be talking about something that will help you in your pursuit of knowledge on your religion to help you develop and nurture not just your knowledge but your faith in your beliefs to assist you in making wiser decisions on how you live your life or conduct discussions with others or pray or do recommended deeds we're going to be discussing what Islamic books are good to read and which books to go to on whatever topic or field you're interested in learning about Joining me to give us the information that we need on the books that we should be picking up is Brother Zeeshan Zaveri from Houston, Texas, whom you've all seen here in the past. He's joining us here in the studio today to give us an introduction to this informational topic that we can all benefit a good amount from. I recommend you all get some pens and papers to take note of anything that may appeal to you so that you may look further into it. So welcome back to Roots, Brother Zeeshan. Thanks for coming here today. Thank you very much. Uh, before I begin, I would just like to say that we will keep the phone lines open for you to call in if you would like to ask Brother Zeeshan anything relevant to this topic only. So we'll take your calls at the end of the day. So feel free to phone in with questions. So I'm going to start, Brother Zeeshan, by asking you, first of all, why is it important to know what the best resources are to read and to gain knowledge from. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I uh, wanted to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to you and to everyone that's watching. And the question that was just asked, why is it important for us to know what resources are, wh why is it important for us to know which resources to know and to refer to? It's a very good question. This question is, 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 is critical to be, uh, critical for us to all understand. Because once we know where to go and find information, that is, what is what, why do we try to find information? Because we want to gain knowledge. With knowledge comes power. This is a famous colloquial saying here in the United States. With knowledge comes power. So why do we go through this process of gaining knowledge? I mean, if, you, if you're in school, just a normal school, elementary, middle school, high school, college, you have textbooks. They're giving you a certain amount of books and books that are printed for a certain subject because that's what they feel in order to learn history, this is the book that you need to learn or these are the topics that need to be covered. In Islam, it works the same exact way. We have to know where to go. And a lot of the times what gets uh, often ignored is, uh, is the books that are, often, uh, that are actually translated in English that are from classical sources. A lot of the times we, uh, we in the Shia community, we actually see a lot of, a lot of the contemporary scholars are, are very well known. But a lot of times classical scholars, they're quite often uh, mi misunderstood or not even well known. So that, this is important, inshallah, I will be going through mul multiple sources, inshallah, because I had these, these same problems when I was uninformed, so to say. And, and I felt like I had, a, I had a large curve, learning curve, of trying to figure out what books were the right books. So I feel it's necessary for me to help others so they can basically go exactly to these sources that I'm re referring to, and I, I can guarantee you this will be of absolute help and, uh, and benefit for, for the viewers here. Mm -hmm. So to start by diving in, what are some good books on history that you would recommend for us? Well, uh, I'm going to, when it comes to history, let me just state one thing about history. History is subjective. You know, every, it, whoever, whoever wins writes the history. So there's, you'll, you will never find one authentic history book. But history can be read in, its, in, in a context, just so you can find out, okay, this is what's being said. Okay, this is, what's, uh, this is what this side is saying, or this is what this other side is saying. So now that I filled a little bit of context with the history books, uh, I personally have purchased Tariq uh, al-Tabari. Uh, it's actually 40 volumes, and uh, it's quite pricey. 
Uh, I don't know if it's like $600 up or so, but it's, it's definitely worth it. It goes from the, t this, is, this is a Sunni historian, by the way. Mm -hmm. This is a Sunni historian. So what happens is that uh, 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 Jarir Tabari, the author and compiler of this book, he goes through the time of, goes through the time of the prophets, through the time of our holy prophet, peace be upon him, and through the, the caliphate of Banu Umayyah and the Abbasids. Mm -hmm. It is a full scope history book from taken from Sunni historians, from Shiite historians. Uh, there's a historian I'm going to mention a little later. He's all often quite uh, quoted w by uh, Tabari. That's, that's one book. And uh, another book by, the same, uh, by another historian, he's a Shiite historian, his name is Abi Makhnaf. It's a, it's a full, it's, a, it's actually a lot bigger than what's translated in English, but this one of the part, uh, it's, it is translated some of it. And Abi Makhnaf is actually in Tariqa Tabari, as I was mentioning. Tabari actually takes from, from, uh, from hadith and narrations from Abi Makhnaf in his Maqtal al Hussein. Mm -hmm. That's also translated in English. Also, Kitab al Irshad, very good history book by Sheikh al Mufid, goes through the history of the A'imma, alayhi salam. Very important book to know. This is a very famous. A very famous Shiite scholar uh, of of the classical days of Shia Islam. Uh, also, we have two two more famous uh, Sunni biographical works that uh, that are very old as well. And these are biography. This is the biography of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family. And one is the Book of Ibn Hisham, and also the the Book of Ibn Ishaq. Ibn Hisham and Ibn His Ishaq are some of the earliest books of biographies about our Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. So it gives you an idea, okay, this is what happened before Hijra, this is what happened after Hijra, the various expeditions that were undertaken. Again, it's, and it's a great book to refer to. Some people aren't good readers. If you want to re research, okay, I want to know what happened in the Battle of Badr, go to the second year of Hijra and start reading about it. I've never been a great reader. Never been a, personally, I've never been a great reader. So I'm more, I, I like to refer to things. Okay, I want to know what happened in the Battle of Khaybar. This is what it says here. This is what it says there. And some people are just great, you know, cover-to-cover -cover readers. So this can be of benefit to many people. Hmm. All right, my next question for you is, what are some good resources that we could use to learn about the Holy Quran? First and foremost, the Quran. We must use the Quran. I, I've... I make it a point to always mention because the holy book, subhanAllah, Kitab Allah. We always hear the famous hadith, Kitab Allah wa itrati ahle bayti. Mm -hmm. Very famous hadith, mutawatir, narrated by multiple Sunni narrators and Shiite narrators in, in both schools. And it is sahih according to both. So you have to refer to the book of Allah. Yeah. Read the translation. But outside of that, outside of the book of Allah, what can we, what, what can we refer to? Well, uh, let me give some, some, uh, some various tafasir of, that we have that uh, we can access. There's one called the Enlightening Com Commentary on the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. This is in English. Also, we have uh, Tafsir al-Mizan. But Tafsir al-Mizan in, in, uh, al is actually written by Allama Tabat Tabai, right? So, but it's not fully translated. But... If you, there's 12 volumes of it, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around the 6th or 7th surah, it, 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 the translation is actually stopped at this point. Inshallah, uh, there might be some more projects to get uh, the rest of the information translated into English. Mm -hmm. But if you want to refer to at least those first five or six surahs in English and see what, 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 uh, what explanations he's giving. And I'll, let me just file a disclaimer here. When it comes to tafsir, the... Tafsir, again, is, is, very, is very relative. The best tafsir you can get is a, a, a tafsir that is handed down from an imam. Mm -hmm. Because that's infallible knowledge coming from an infallible personality. So I'll give you an example. And this is in, narr narrated in many of our, our, our various book of ahadith. Mm -hmm. It'll say like, like I'll give an example. It's in, it's in our book Al-Kafi, one of our major four books. It says that it gives the reasons for revelation, asbab al-nuzul, for, 
for chapter number five, verse number three, when it says, uh, on this day I've perfected your religion, chapter number five, verse number three, and chapter number five, verse 67, saying, Yahihu Rasul Balligh. He said, proclaim, O messenger, uh, proclaim. If you don't proclaim this, your risal is not complete. And it, it says specifically through an authentic chain of narrators that this was uh, revealed on the day of Ghadir. So, and this is coming from an infallible imam through a, through a authentic chain of narrators. So this is, this is the utmost when it comes to tafsir. Mm -hmm. But again, what the Quran says to do tadabbur on it. Chapter number, chapter number 47, Surah Al-Muhammad. Chapter number 47, verse number 24. It says, it says, why don't you ponder on the Quran? Have I placed locks on your hearts? Chapter number four, verse number 82. It says, why don't you ponder on the Quran? If it, had, if it had been revealed by someone other than Allah, there would have been in it many discrepancies. So constantly go to the Quran, go to the Quran. Why don't you ponder on it? And also just as another, another point of reference, uh, it's going to be Asbab al-Nuzul. This is a Sunni, uh, tafsir of the Quran, but it's straight hadith from Sunni sources that gives you reasons for re revelation, as the word means, azbab al-nuzul, the reasons, azbab al-nuzul, for the revelations, the reasons for the revelations. So you can go through various various ahadith and see which, which surah uh, and which personalities they were revealed for. Okay, thank you for that. Um, now, I want to ask you, what are some good books to read up on um, about the Sunni versus Shia argumentation? Uh, this is a very good question. Well, this is something that we should all keep ourselves familiar with because unfortunately, we tend to be attacked. We're always on the defensive. Mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing wrong with that. We, ha we have to be prepared. If somebody comes and, 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 and tries to make an attempt on your life, you have to protect yourself. This is an attack on your religion. This is an attack on your ideology your beliefs. And at the end of the day, you know, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of a Shia, we, what we do is we just duck and hide because we don't know. We don't have the answers. Be like, oh, why do you do this? Or why do, why do you, you Shia do this? And we'll, we'll be like, oh, I don't know. Well, that's the problem. Once you know, you have this confidence. You can answer people. So, as far as the books on Shia Sunni argumentation, there's three books I definitely like to, uh, I would recommend, and they are in the English language, of course. One is Peshawar Nights, goes through various topics, kind of in a format of, of conversation. Uh, another one is called Shiism and Sunnism. This is another very good book, and it gives you sources of where he's getting this information from. Where is it located in the books of the Sunni? Same thing with Peshawar Nights as well. Al-Muraja'at, another book, Al-Muraja'at. This is another Sunni Shia argumentation book. So it gives you examples of like, you know, and these are all three of these books, similar, similar examples. Like why, why do we use Turba? Mm -hmm. You know, why do, we, why do we Shia cry for Imam Hussein? You know, in their books, you know, uh, the, the Prophet was, was absolutely, uh, you know, distraught on hearing this. In their books, in their authentic narrations. And these are books that we must be able to delve into. Again, research a topic. If you're not good at reading, just research a topic. Okay, why, what, what, do, what does this book say about, where do we get these reasons from? Why we do the Torah? Is it in their books? I mean, if you want, if you're talking to a Christian, you don't talk to a Christian with the Quran. You talk to a Christian with the Bible. When you talk to a Jew, you don't talk to, uh, you don't talk to a Jew with the New Testament. You use the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You have to know who to talk to. Because if I start using Al-Kafi and Man La Yahdur Al-Faqih on a, with the with Sunni, they'll be like, A, what is that book? Mm -hmm. and, and B, I don't even agree with those books. I, in my opinion, in their opinion, they believe they're a bunch of fabrications. Yeah. And of course, we believe, on, on the other hand, we believe many of their narrations are fabricated as well. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the books that I would like to recommend on that. All right. Thank you very much for the enlightening information, Brother Zishan. We are now going to go on a short break, and we will be back to discuss more about books that we can use to benefit ourselves when learning about Islam. Assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to the show. Today we are here discussing Islamic books that we can read in order to learn more about Islam. 
and we are joined by Brother Zeeshan Zaveri from Houston, Texas, who is here in studio today. So, uh, welcome back, Brother Zeeshan. Thank you. Um, the next question that I have for you is, what are some good books that we can read in order to learn more about fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence? Fiqh is a very important thing. You know, it deal, we, we deal with fiqh on a daily basis, whether it's with, in the month of Ramadan, with Salah, you know, Som, Hajj, Zakat, Khums. You deal with it every day. And of course, for the most of the time, and I'm not, uh, uh, people always look at a Tawdhi al from various marja, right? That's the books that they're probably accustomed to. Mm -hmm. But I want to give some classical works that are, are translated in English that a lot of people may not know that exist. Mm. And there's two specific works that, that are translated in English. One is actually translated is, is, is the book by Sheikh Tusi. May Allah be pleased with him. Who died in 460 after Hijra. So this book is a thousand years old. One thousand year old fiqh book. His Risala. His Risala. And it's called Al-Nihaya. Al-Nihaya by Sheikh, Sheikh Tusi. Mm -hmm. So a thousand year old fiqh book. So you're looking and you can go through there. And, you can, and what, what's the beauty of this? Because you get to see how, what fiqh was back in those days. How, wh how did they handle fiqh? These great scholars. By the way, a lot of people don't know this. Sheikh Tusi's title, he re re reached such a lofty title within the Shia. They call him Sheikh Al-Ta'ifa. The Sheikh of the sect of Shia Islam. Mm -hmm. This is the title he became known as. Sheikh Al-Ta'ifa. Now, if that's not greatness, I don't know what is. I mean... Of course, he's not a he's, he's not a infallible, but but we as human beings on this earth, we can achieve greatness too. We can. We don't think we can, but we can. It's there. We just have to grab it. We have to know where to go grab that greatness, and that starts with knowledge. Mm -hmm. So Al Nahaya, the next book, Sharia Shari Al Islam. This is the book by Muhaqat Al Hilli. This is the relative of the great scholar Allama Hilli, who, who uh, Allama Hilli lived in 700 AH time period. So this is a little bit before that time period in the 600s. So Muhaqiq's book, Sharai al-Islam, is the same concept. It's going through various laws, you know, Tahara. It's, if you look at it, the, the, the structure you see in, in, a, in a contemporary risala of, of any marja, It'll be the same type of... They already, they already set those foundations, those classical scholars. The contemporary scholars are following that, that same type of format. If you look at... When you actually open up those books, you'll actually notice that the Kitab al-Tahara is the first one. It's amazing. So you'll see that. Kitab al-Tahara, Kitab al-Som, Kitab al-Zakat, and, and so on and so forth. So these are two books. So Al-Nihaya and Sharayal al-Islam. And they can be both be purchased. And as a matter of fact, let me also mention one website that a lot of people don't know that exists. And I bought a lot of books from. And it's, uh, it's called the Al-Khui Bookstore. It's a little pricey, but I'm going to make a point about price. If you can buy a BMW, if you can buy, if you can buy nice cars, and you can buy a nice phone, iPhone, and the Samsung Galaxy, you can purchase on knowledge. So you, people say, oh, it's too expensive. I heard people tell me that it's too expensive for that book. It's too expensive for the book? Are you kidding me? But you, it's okay for you to buy all these ni ni nice little uh, expensive gadgets? Don't you think that's a little shirk right there? For dunya, when it comes to dunya, people, don't, people, uh, people want to spend all the time. But when it comes to akhara, nobody wants to spend. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, so the next question that I have for you is, what are some books that you would recommend for us to read about hadith? Very good question, alhamdulillah. A hadith. A hadith is the plural, and hadith is the singular. Hadith is very important because where do we get our beliefs from? Today, scholars don't make up those beliefs, do they? If they've already been set. Where do we get them from? They come from the Qur'an. And they come from the ahadith. Mm -hmm. So this is a primary source of knowledge. The Qur'an explains at times at a general level. And the, and the ahadith, they'll fill in those details. Example, 
salah. It tells you aqim of salah, right? But it doesn't tell you how to read salat. It doesn't tell you how many raqats they are. It doesn't tell you, it doesn't tell you uh, what, what surah do you recite? What surah can you recite? What surahs can you not recite? What do you say in ruku? These are not explained in the Qur'an. Chapter number 16, verse 44 and verse 66, it says the Prophet has been sent to do litubayyana, to the nas, to clarify to the people. Chapter 16, Surah Al-Nahl, chapter of the B, verse number 44 and 64. It says that the Prophet has been sent to, do, to clarify to the people. So, how do we get those clarifications? Through the riwayat. And I'm going to mention some books that are translated in English. Let me first and, for, for, first and foremost start out with one of our four major books. One of our four major. This is the only book that is translated in the English language. Every, every, all, the other one, all the other three, they're still in Arabic. And inshallah, subhanahu, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give someone tawfiq one day to, uh, to, put this, uh, to t undertake this project and translate, this, uh, translate those other three works. But the, the, the work I'm mentioning is Al-Kafi by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Yaqub Al-Kulaini. And this compilation, Al-Kafi, has over 16,000 narrations. 16,099 narrations, to be exact. It's a huge compilation. It's broken down into eight volumes. The first two are called the Usul Al-Kafi, the principles, where you get where you have a lot of the volumes that we have our aqidah, the beliefs. Mm -hmm. The volumes three through seven talk about the furu', talk about the branches. And that talks about the psalm, the uh, janaza, what do you do when somebody dies, uh, wills, you know, ev everything you can imagine that's in the a'mal category, in the actions, the deeds. And the last volume, volume number eight, is called Roda. And those are more like miscellaneous narrations. And again, uh, this can be read, just, you know, you can read it. Again, you can read it. Okay, I want to learn a little bit about death. You know, someone, someone, someone close to us died. Actually, I'm speaking from my experience. Someone close to us died. So I ended up actually ended up looking up into the, into the section of, of dying. I said, let me go see what it says about this. And then you can learn a little bit more. You know, and, and, that's, and, and we can do that. And sometimes, you know, we as Muslims tend to be like in Muharram. We have different, we have different, uh, you know, we have uh, peaks and valleys, right? Yes. So Muharram is a big time. Oh, everybody's religious. Mm -hmm. Ramadan, everybody's religious. You know, Shawwal, who cares about Shawwal, right? I mean, this is the mentality. Yeah. You know, Islam is, con con it's, it's consistency. So you can do this. You can go into different narrations. Like Ramadan comes up, go to the go to the Kitab al Song in in Al Kafi. So this is I wanted to give a little bit more more uh, more information on this book because it's just that much. That's how how much weight it it holds in Shia Islam. And I will file a disclaimer: not all of the narrations in there are authentic. None of our four books, four major books, are considered authentic narrations. Right. You know, a, a completely entire book from cover to cover. So I will file that disclaimer. Many scholars that have come before us have said that, that uh, they've actually graded it. I'll give you a very famous example. Uh, Alama Majlisi, compiler of Bihar al -Anwar, he has actually graded the entire Al-Kafi compilation. And he has gone through the grading. And you can see multiple narrations that he's considered weak via the... Isnad or the Sana, the chain of narrators. So he's actually gone, it's called Miratul Uqul, and that's where he goes and he actually authenticates and weakens, does the Jah wa Ta'adil, the authentication and strengthening of, of the different, uh, of different narrations. The uh, next, uh, next book of, of hadith that's also been translated, Alhamdulillah, is called Uyun Akhbar Rida by Sheikh al Sudu. It's another good book. Narrations coming from Imam Rida alayhi salam. So, again, that's another good book for people to go to. Another one is called uh, Kitab al-Tawheed by Shaykh al-Sudduq. All narrations on Tawheed. All narrations. And it's actually been translated by, it's actually been translated just recently by uh, Molana Ali Raza Rizvi. He's in London. Mm -hmm. So, mashallah, may Allah bless him 
for undertaking that job. And inshallah, more people can, can keep that on board. Mm-hmm. Also another one, it's called Itiqadatul Imamiyah, the Shiite creed. Type in Shiite creed. I don't know if the book exists, but I know a PDF of it exists. Mm-hmm. So go to Google and type in Shiite creed of Sheikh Suduk. You gotta remember, Sheikh Suduk, when did he live? He, he died 389. As I mentioned previously, compiler of Al-Kafi, Al-Kulaini. When did he die? He died 329. He died in the same year, Imam, Imam Mahdi, Ajallallah Ta'ala Faruj Sharif, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, when he went into occultation. 329 is when he went into his final ghayba. So that's when Kulaini died. 389 is when Sheikh al-Suduq died. Mm-hmm. So he has a book straight on kalam, theology, aqidah, and that's called Itiqadatul Imamiyah, the Shiite creed. And a book that came shortly thereafter is called Tashi Itiqadat by Sheikh Mufid. He's actually correcting, he's giving, a, he has a difference of opinion with Sheikh Suduq on the, on the theology. So he's doing an emendation or a correction of what the book I just previously mentioned. It's a Qadat al So he's doing tasheeh. So he's doing his correction on it. Of course, as you see today, scholars disagree here and there, right? Yeah. This is normal. I mean, if you're if you're if you're dealing with people who are who are who who are not not in, infallible in knowledge, this is going to happen. This is this is something that's going to happen. And you know, and this difference of opinion is good. This is good because then you can learn about different points of view in today's day and age. But at the end of the day, you follow the Quran and the Ahl al Bayt. Mm-hmm. So we follow the narrations. So what, what else is there? Another book by Sheikh Mufid. It's called Al Amali al Mufid. Very nice book. It's, uh, it's, it's actually broken down into majlis format. What do I mean by that? Actually, it'll say assembly number one, majlis number one, majlis number two. Majlis number three. So it's compiled by his students who are basically sitting in his class, like at Hosa, for example, sitting there and writing down, this is what he's saying. Mm-hmm. And they compile it, and it's called the Amal Mufid. Mm-hmm. Another good book is called Kamil Ziyarat by Ibn Qulawai Al-Kummi. Al-Kummi. This is a old, very old school classical work by... And this is focusing on the various ziyarat. Talks about the ziyarat of Imam Hussein and the benefits of it and what can you say and so on and so forth. And, and like I mentioned previously, there's authentic narrations and there's weak narrations. So I will also suggest reading books on to learn about how, what is the science of hadith. There's a science called Ilm al rijal And alhamdulillah, there is a book already translated. Uh, it's, got, it's more like a treatise. It's a very small 25-page section, but also a, a more contemporary compiler has also added his information in there as well. It's called The Introduction to the Sciences of Hadith. Introduction to the Sciences of Hadith. And inside there is the uh, Dirayt al-Hadith, the treatise of Dirayt al-Hadith by by Shahid al-Thani, who died in around, around 9-11 after Hijra. So about 500 years old work. Mm-hmm. And Abu, Abu Hadi al-Fadli, he's a contemporary scholar. He's, he's written more information about the authentication and weakening of, of different narrators. How, what does Ba'if mean? It gives you a good background. What does Ba'if mean? What does it mean by Sahih? What does it mean by Mawathaq? Like I'll give an example. Sahih means like authentic without a shadow of a doubt. But in Shiite tradition, Sahih means that in the chain of narrators, that every single chain of narrator is a authentic, voracious, accredited, and given, given tawthiq, uh, trustworthiness. And they're all ithna ashadis. They're all imamis. But if you go to muwathaq, that means there could be non-imamis in the chain. But they're authentic as well. Mm-hmm. Still authentic, but it means it's to, it's a classification system. Yeah. So you get to get to learn a lot from that, and it'll give you everything. What what does Mursal mean? What does Marfu mean? And and this is something important because I've heard in many many different speeches, various weak hadith being quoted, at times very fabricated hadith. But people don't understand this; they don't know that there's a science. Just quoting hadith 
is not necessarily the right way of going. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's not, it's not some opinion that I have. I mean, my opinion in this world means nothing. I mean, we've got great scholars like Alama Majlisi, who's done entire grading on Al Kafi. Who is he, for example? Like, well, who is he to question Sheikh Kuleni's work, who died 329? Mm -hmm. You know, the sciences have been in place. This is this is important, and but it's translating English, so this gives people insight into the world of the of the science of Hadith. Mm -hmm. Another work that's uh, that's actually written in English. It's not translated. It's written in English. It's by Hussein Mudarisi. He's an academician. It's called Traditions and Survival. Traditions and Survival. He goes through the various Kufa narrators. And he goes through some of the narrators at the time of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salam. So he goes through those and he, he talk, gives some background. Get, getting him from the Arabic Rajal works. And, and that will be another good book to learn a little bit, a bit about. Who is, who is Aban ibn Taghlib? Who is such and such narrator? Who is Jabir ibn Yazid the Jafi? These are various narrators that you would see in, a, in, a, in, in, in Shiite narrations. So it's good to get a little background about that. So I just wanted to add that point as well. Okay. Um, so do you think it might be a good idea for us to read from Sunni Hadith books? Absolutely. 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 As a matter of fact, I became a stronger Shia by reading Sunni books. What do I mean by that? I, I, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah has allowed me the opportunity to actually have all six Sahih Sitta at home. I have Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, the Sunan of Tirmidhi, the Sunan of Ibn Majah, Sunan of Ibn Dawud, and Nasai. These are six major books of our Sunni brothers and sisters. And the more I read it, and especially I can point people into the right direction. These are all translated in English. Actually, I actually go to uh, the, the bookstores of our Sunni brothers and sisters and, they, and I buy it. They're like, oh yeah, that's that Shia guy who always comes and buys books. You know, and, and I'm, I'm cool with that. And they know I'm Shia. You know, you should be proud to be Shia. We're always like ducking and hiding, you know. Yes. There, there's a time and place for taqiyya. But there's a time and place where you bring your beliefs out okay. in a respectful manner. You know, so this is, this is the point of this. So, what else do I, like for example, I have another book called uh, uh, Malik ibn Anas's book, it's founder of the Maliki school. It's called the Malik of Muatta, mm -hmm. Malik al Muatta. So this is another book. Why, why is it important that we read these books? I'll, I'll point you into, it's important because our truths are in our beliefs, a lot of our beliefs that we hold on to in, in the Shiite creed and the Shiite dogma are in their books. If you, like I mentioned earlier about Kitabullah wa Itrati Ahl Bayti, it is in their books. It's in two of their major six books. What do I mean? What books? So, uh, Sahih Muslim has it. Go to the, go to the chapter of Fadail al Sahaba, the, cha the merits and the virtues of the companions, in, in my publications in volume four. And if you go to the Sunan of, of Tirmidhi, it's also in volume six. And that's also under the chapter of Manaqib, which is also meaning virtues and merits of the Sahabas. Mm -hmm. And if you go there, it talks about that I've left two things for you. The Book of Allah, Kitab Allah, wa Ahl mm -hmm. And this is, but unfortunately, unfortunately, if you go to the to Sunni works, if you go to the Sunni Masajid, what do they quote? They quote Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. Kitab Allah wa Sunnati all the time. But, but look, if you go to their major six books, it's, it's nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. Where is it located? It's actually located in two locations. In Mustadrak al-Hakim, al-Nishaburi, and also in the Malik al as I mentioned. Both are weak, according to their Rajal standards. Oh. Both are weak. Malik al is considered mursal. Disconnected. And there's a difference between Shia and Sunni mursal. Mm. And, I, and I'm going to this detail. I know we're talking about books. I'm going to, to explain you that we have truths that are available. The signs of Allah are all around you. You just have to find them. They're there. There's this thing called Ayn al yaqeen seeing of certainty. It's different when you hear it in a speech, but it's much different when you read it yourself because then you've actually got full yaqeen and certainty that this is true. That's the point. We can actually see that these things exist. 
And I'm very passionate about this because I was once somebody who, who was totally just in jahiliya, just totally was just, did not care about the religion. But the books are there. I'm, I'm just a normal brother. There's nothing special about Zishan Zaveri here. I'm just a normal brother. It, it, and, and I know that people, oh no, it's for the scholars. No, no, no. There is no, there is no taqlid when it comes to aqidah. Go to any risala when it comes to tawheed. Do you know if whether or not you're committing shirk or not? Go to Kitab al Tawheed by Sheikh al Saduq. It's translated in English. There is every every mainstream scholar today will tell you it's only on the Furud Deen, it's not on the Usul. So what does that mean? That means we need to ourselves go deeper in our religion so we can have a firm foundation. So that's this is the point here. So those are some of the points I just wanted to mention about that. Okay. So uh, the last question that I want to ask you to close up the discussion for tonight is, should we limit ourselves to English books only? English books only. Well, the English books is a great way of starting off, especially if that's your only language. So I, I'm just going to file the disclaimer and say that if you're, if you're not someone who's from, let's say, from Pakistan, somebody who knows Urdu, somebody from an Arab country who knows Arabic, from somebody from Iran who speaks Farsi. A lot of these other works aren't translated into English. Mm. And there are, in Farsi, majority of the books are translated in Farsi. Yeah. And of course, in Arabic, that's the original source. And Urdu, maybe a little bit less, but more, Urdu is translated still more than English mm -hmm. because there's more, more Urdu-speaking scholars who can translate yes. into, from Farsi or Arabic into, into Urdu. Mm. But as far as going in, going in, we cannot limit ourselves. But the point of this is to get deeper into your religion. But don't let that be the stopping point. Because at the end of the day, this, these English books are just a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Just a stepping stone. We have to make our Arabic better. I mean, obviously, it's going to start with the Quran, improve our recitation, and, and read the translation side by side. You can say, oh, okay, this is what this word means. Okay. Sadiqin means truthful. Oh, okay, cool. Kulli or kullu means every. And then you break down every single part of the verse. And then you're, you, believe it or not, you're learning a lot of Arabic words. A lot of Arabic words. And then you can eventually start delving into other works. And of course, you can take Arabic class, go to an Arabic school. And in college, I believe they teach in, in, in majority of mainstream colleges now, mm -hmm. Arabic. They'll go Arabic 1, Arabic 2, and all the way up to various high levels of, of sarf and nahu and grammatical and yeah. syntax of, of, of the Arabic language. Mm -hmm. So this is, the point of this is that we need to be able to get, in, at the end of the day, get to the main points of knowledge. What is that? And that is the Arabic, Arabic, Arabic sources. Mm -hmm. Everything was written and compiled in Arabic. Of course, the language of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was Arabic. So of course, uh, you know, as, as de facto, the the imams would also be the ones reading in Arabic, right? Or, or giving various narrations in Arabic. So, you cannot li limit ourselves to English books. Try your best to, at the end of the day, you have to learn Arabic. If you want to get deeper into religion, you have to learn Arabic. There's no way around it. You have to, you have to get into it. You have to, you have to be able to, to make an attempt. At the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge your niyyah. He would judge your niyyah and he's going to judge your, your actions. And if your actions, by the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when death reaches the throne, Imam's always said this, when death reaches this, when the soul, I'm sorry, when the soul reaches this, meaning when you're dead, it, but when the soul reaches this, and at least, as long as you know that, as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you have spent a lot of time and a lot of effort continuously trying to make your understanding Meaning, come to a better understanding of knowledge. At the end of the day, we should all be little mini scholars of our own. We're not talking about having to put on an amama or become a marja, but we need to know what's going on because people are going to question us from a Christian perspective. They're going to question us from a Sunni perspective, maybe from a Jewish perspective, maybe from a Hindu perspective, an atheist perspective. We are ourselves, I question my religion. With question, when you question, you get a better understanding. And this is, inshallah, I hope this has been, been fruitful because I want to help others because I didn't have this help. 
I didn't have this help. And I feel that if I can give these books out and they can go to these, go to the internet and search these books and they buy them, inshallah, spend some money in the way of Allah, mm -hmm. it'll be very good for them. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping, inshallah, this was, this was good uh, and, and fruitful and beneficial for the, for the viewers that are out there. All right. Thank you, Brother Zishan, for sharing this great information with us. I know there are definitely many books of each field in Islam that you brought up that I'm going to read, inshallah. And I hope many more of us out there have taken note on what books caught our interest with the intention to go read them. It was great having you on the show Thank and you. great learning from you. But that's all the time that we have for tonight. I would like to thank each of you for joining me and Brother Zishan tonight. You may visit Brother Zishan's Spanish language Dawa website at lacasadelprofeta.com. Please join me here next week, same place, same time. And email me any topics that you would like to hear about, inshallah. Please remember that Salam TV is nonprofit and is made pro possible only through your contributions. So until next week, inshallah, Assalamu alaikum and good night.